March 4th town meeting to order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you have cell phones with you tonight, please put them on airplane mode or turn them off or on vibrate, please. Up upcoming meeting minute <coughs> meetings. Uh, the next town meeting will be Monday, April 1st at 7.30 p.m. here at the town office. Uh, our second meeting, which will be budgetary meeting, will be April the 15th at 7.30 here at the town office. Is there any other meetings or any other things anybody else has before then? Yes, sir. Maddie, don't we have a Citizens Advisory Committee meeting April 5th? Do you have one? Hmm. I have to get back to you on that. I don't okay. Where's um, um, Everybody check your meeting minutes. Just moving the meeting minutes for February the 4th. <coughs> yeah, I'll them to do. If uh, anybody needs to sign up for the town, if they want to speak, please sign up over there, please, at the door. If you want to speak. Is there any corrections or amendments to the meeting? Minutes as presented no sir i didn't have any you didn't have any meeting minutes i didn't have any corrections okay i don't have any either plan i'm good i'm good i need a motion to i'll make a motion to accept minutes. the february 4th uh town meeting notes as presented uh, motion has been made by commissioner buckman is there a second 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 by commissioner o'donnell all in favor of the meeting minutes being passed please say aye Aye. 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 Pass this five zero. Police report. Deputy. Sergeant. Evening. Evening. I'm uh, here to fill in for Ben tonight. Hopefully, uh, I won't embarrass him or myself here. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna start on the second page and then we'll circle around to the, one of the biggest things to go on this month. Um, but I went through some of the stuff here, some of the major things or the things we had several of. We had four suspicious activity calls. Um, as I understand it, nothing came out of those. Those were just people calling and somebody walking where they shouldn't be or where they thought they shouldn't be, things like that. Um, we had five destructions of property. Um, in speaking to Ben this afternoon, most of this stuff was random minor acts of, you know, just juvenile vandalism. Um, it's not a crime wave in the making, as I understand it. Um, we had five 911s, uh, eight alarms. None of those were good alarms. Those were all uh, false alarms. The deputies conducted eight talks cards, five walking patrols, 40 patrol checks. They conducted 25 traffic stops, and out of those stops, they wrote nine citations and had 17 warnings um, and one traffic arrest from one of those stops on a suspended driver, as I understand that. And that's basically, basically the bulk. But the, the biggest event to occur for, for this last month was uh, Deputy Mostoler was temporarily transferred to the schools to fill in. Um, there was a vacancy from a deputy at Linganore High School who had to have shoulder surgery. And because of the training involved in that mandated by the state, they have to have a deputy who's had that training and it's four to six weeks long. So rather than do that, they approached Ted and asked him if he'd be willing to fill in and he agreed to do that. So at the same time, luckily we were conducting a process to permanent repl replace a Middletown deputy who got transferred to uh, investigations. So out of that transfer process, we selected a couple of alternates. 
um, to help fill in the, the temporary vacancy for Ted. So about eight weeks of that or more will be filled by Jason A. Halt. Deputy A. Halt and I worked together for a couple of years. I was really pleased. I fought really hard to get him to get him up here. I, I think he'll be a good fit for the town um, during his time here. I know that he, he's a hard worker. And if you ask him to do something, he'll bend over backwards. He'll kill himself trying to get it done. And he's a straight shooter, so I don't think you'll have any issues with him at all. But I expect uh, Ted, right now, I expect Ted will be back in the middle of June, as far as I know. So um, that's pretty much all I have. If you guys have any questions? That's great. Yes, ma'am. He's ma been transitioned to the problematic areas? I'm sorry? He's been transitioned to the know where the problematic areas are? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Ben was here in town with me all day long, um, and I'm going to be in town probably most of my day, every day for the next couple of weeks until Jason gets fully up to steam and up to speed. Um, he's been reading a lot of the back reports and things like that, some of the bigger investigations that Ben's been working on from uh, some thefts from cars here in town. So he's pretty up to speed on everything that's okay. major going on. Thank you. But it'll be a process. Any other questions? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Thank you. And welcome to Emmitsburg. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you, Sergeant. Town Manager's report. Good evening. First off, uh, Commissioner Buckman, there's a Citizens Advisory Committee meeting April 16th. 16th. So okay. um, that'll be noted on the next agenda for April, but it's 7 30 here. All right. This is the town manager's report for January of 2019. I'll highlight some of the key areas uh, related to the street. Staff plowed, salted, and shoveled for a couple of snow events, repaired and replaced some street lights, installed ash receptacles at the town square that we received through a grant, uh, repaired a manhole in Brookfield, and conducted the monthly street sweeping. In the park, staff assisted the Boy Scouts. Uh, Boy Scouts picked up and bagged piles of leaves in Memorial and Community Park. We thank them for that. It was very helpful. Related to water, Rainbow Lake is currently at its spillway level of 16.6 .6 feet. The well levels, well number three, number four, and number five were shut off to allow, allow less gallons per minute through the plant, and the lake quota is being met or exceeded. Uh, water production and consumption, the backwash rate, backwash water rate was about 11.8% and 79.3% of the water in the month of January came from Rainbow Lake. And we purchased 462,450 gallons from the Mount in January. Related to wastewater, we received approximately 4.3 inches of precipitation. We currently have a surplus of 22.4 inches over the last six months. We treated an average of 778,000 gallons per day and consumed 198,340 gallons per day, which means 74.5% of the water of the wastewater treated at the wastewater treatment plant this month was wild water. We had no spills of untreated sewerage in the month of January. However, we did exceed the plant's design capacity seven times in the month of January. On the following page, you'll see trash pickup will remain Mondays in the month of April. And I've highlighted some of the meetings that I attended. And then some of the noteworthy items. Staff upgraded some outda outdated water meters. They repaired a water leak on West Main Street. They assisted the contractor with beginning stages of a sewer relining project. And in February, they assisted the contractor with the relining, and that project is now complete. However, the sewer line from Harrington's, Harrington's parking lot to the end of the line towards the bridge cannot be relined until the town installs a manhole because there's nowhere for the liner to go. There's no way to pull it through. Um, but the majority of that line has been completed. Uh, the liner on Lagoon number three at the wastewater treatment plant has been re was repaired. There was a small tear in it. Um, the water plant, the entire plant is operating with just lake water and wells number one and number two come on occasionally with reduced runs. In the month of January, we had a visit from MDE uh, they conducted a water plant inspection and came up with the following three things that the town is mandated to complete. The first one, which is on the agenda tonight, agenda tonight is to implement a black flow or a cross-connection 
program ordinance. The roof on well number five needs to be repaired and we need to complete a preventative maintenance schedule, which we had mostly completed. They just wanted a few things added to it. And that is the manager's report for the month of January. Do you have any questions for town manager? Commissioner O'Donnell. Thank you. Um, following up on the pipelining issue related to the manhole, the sewer access, do we have a timeline set, a date set where we're going to create that or are we even close to that for engineering purposes no there's a lot of that's going to go into work so that the the cost associated with installing a manhole is is ex it's not cheap so um, we're going to concentrate on getting the other lines working on that you'll see that in the upcoming FY 2020 budget of relining some more and then once we get a chance we'll sit down with an engineer and a design and come up with a plan to install a manhole so the section that was scheduled to have the lining that can't be lined? It was all it's all been completed okay. except for the small portion from uh, about Harrington's parking lot towards the bridge. It's a very small section that wasn't done. The rest of the project was completed um, with no problems. Great. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Ritz? I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Commissioner? Okay. <clears throat> Um, can you give us an update on the bridge? I mean, I know weather obviously has been wrecking havoc basically with their work, but where are they as far as right right now? Uh, I believe, that you, as everybody's noticed, and I left my note back in my desk on the bridge project, um, the lane shift has been completed. They're currently working on, they were shut down for a day for some sediment and erosion control issues, so, but they complete, fixed those and they're back up and working. Um, I know they're working on the other side. Do you have an update, Zach? Um, they're going to restart tomorrow. They're restarting okay. tomorrow. Okay. Cool. That works. I just I'm curious. Thanks. It, it looked like most of the bridge is gone. Uh, the old bridge is gone already. I uh, believe so. Just a little bit of the bottom has to right. be taken out, and then they can start replacing with the new. Um, I do have only one more question. Um, uh, a couple of uh, I had a couple complaints from. Uh, um, there's been some vehicles on the on the, the square have been parked there for a number of weeks and not moved and I don't know if we, uh, if the, the parking uh, person can okay. check on that and maybe mm -hmm. talk to tires and keep an eye on them okay. because it was one car and then they changed and moved it to another one apparently the plan or the code enforcement's addressed it but we'll follow up on it okay and then just one more to your commissioner Blanchard about the bridge I think they've estimated their completion date has been moved up to hopefully August of 2019 as opposed to December mm. but we'll we'll follow up on that parking complaint That'd be nice. thank you mm -hmm. any other questions Thank you. Arthur. Commissioner comments? Commissioner O'Donnell? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, something uh, was brought to my attention, a request that I'm going to bring forward as an agenda item, hopefully, for a future meeting related to wood collection from the, the town's watershed. Uh, a number of folks in town rely on wood heating for their homes. A number of folks uh, also are... Uh, in an income bind so they're looking to be able to draw uh, from the wa the uh, the watershed from deadfall and they're hoping to create sort of a uh, a structured process through which they could legally and appropriately remove wood with town supervision they've brought up some models from other communities uh, and that's something I'm going to bring forward I, I think there's great value to that especially uh, given the fact that if, if folks are financially strapped or hard pressed at least this would be something useful to them as they're heating their homes using wood. Um, and, and that's a year-round heating. It's not just winter heating. Um, moving from there, uh, I had the opportunity to meet with the superintendent of the Maryland Park Service. One of the things she shared is she is uh, proposing or will be proposing a means by which small communities such as ours can have grant management assistance. So maybe that was another way through which we can manage our recreational trail program grants. As, as a way to move forward on the $40,000 that we have in grant money uh, available to us right now. Um, I was advised that the trolley trail folks are going to be presenting something at the Thurmont town meeting. I think that's tomorrow night. Uh, the trolley trail affects us because hopefully if that gains momentum, we can gain some more momentum 
linking to the university. I think there's great value to that, and uh, a footpath would be a great benefit to all of us, maybe even connecting to Thurmont. I think that would be a big, big tourist draw here. Um, I was approached by some residents related to the intersection of Irish Town Road and Brookfield Road, uh, not about the signs being knocked around, but rather by the puddling that's occurring there that's freezing now. And cars are pulling into the intersection at reasonable speeds and sliding onto Irish Town Road uh, and through the stop sign because of the, the puddling there. Um, the hope is the town can review that and maybe uh, do some trenching of some sort to let water runoff occur there. My thought is maybe a French drain, like a straight bore and some gravel perhaps, just to get the, wa the water off the roadway there. Um, I attended the Livable Frederick planning meeting that occurred last week at Catoctin High School. We had a good representation from our community. There was some significant discussion related to senior housing in the community. There's a need for that. One of the planning uh, initiatives that they're considering relates to affordable housing. Now, affordable housing in this context is for middle-income individuals, and the premise is there is uh, an, too low an option, or too, rather, too few options for individuals to purchase affordable housing. Uh, we're not talking about big houses. We're not talking about um, houses that have subsidies supporting them. We're talking about individuals buying properties but not having the appropriate uh, choice uh, to buy a house that's not exceedingly expensive or excessively large. Uh, the other part is I've had more than a few questions coming forward about commercial development uh, on this side of 15. Uh, one came forward related to, uh, we'll call them a donut purveyor. <laughs> um, so I'm directing these folks to contact the town office as I don't know if we have any official uh, inquiries yet. Uh, and I had more than a few inquiries related to the commercial development across the street um, regarding rudders. And some people are, I would say, supportive of the idea of getting the buildings to look appropriate to the vernacular of, of the town of Emmitsburg. Basically, we want them to look good. We don't want them to look plastic. So uh, I, I've had some support on that, and I'm happy to hear that. These conclude my comments. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Commissioner Ritz. Uh, Mr. President, should we continue with commissioner comments, or should we jump back to? Yeah, no, I was going to finish with it, then I'll go back to. Okay, planning. I didn't want to. I, I skipped it. I, I did just, just jumped over real quick. No problem. But I'll I, go back to it. Um, briefly, just uh, we had a productive um, parks and rec meeting the other week, and um, just the minutes are in, in process. Ms. Shaw, I will have this to you shortly. I promise. And um, anyone that's interested in joining parks and rec, please, uh, please see me. Um, we're always looking for, for new members. Or even if you are interested and just want to sit in, um, just to see what it's like. Next meeting is third Tuesday in May. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Buckner. Um, I also, when is bulk trash pickup? I want to kind of get that out. I think it's in April, isn't it? Uh, it's April the 20th. Hold on. Just so people know. April, is it April 27th? Sixth. April 6th, I was way off. Huh. April 6th? April 6th, oh, it's on the calendar. Thank you. And then the other thing, um, the Citizens Advisory Committee uh, is having somebody come uh, to present the Alice report to us, um, which is on the 16th, right, of April. And please consider coming, getting to know our community where we live and what's going on there. Um, everyone's invited. That's an open meeting. Commissioner, I might suggest you, you explain what the ALICE report is. ALICE report um, is a report that's presented that uh, working or um, families that are not making enough money to, um, to live, pretty much, and that we are, I think, at a six, what was it, 68% in North Frederick County? Yeah, it's pretty high. So we want to gather a better understanding of exactly what's going on so as we go forward, you know, we know our constituents. Okay, so that's our town, so please come. We'd like to have you there. Thank you. Commissioner Blanchard. Uh, just a couple things. Um, basically, obviously we're in the middle of winter. Um, seems like every other day it's either snow or ice, everything else. Try to be careful out there. Um, encourage you basically to look at your neighbors if they need help. Uh, random act of kindness can go a, a long way. 
Um, one example was I was at work the other day, and we got out of school early, and I saw a person hovering around my vehicle, cleaning my windows off. And at first off, my first thought was, like, the person's trying to break into my car, um, <laughs> to be honest with you. And then I got closer, and I recognized it was a fellow teacher, and I asked her, what are you doing? And she goes, random act of kindness. And it's amazing how something like that can go a long way to, like, just making your day. So, anyways, I just encourage you, sometimes a random act of kindness with your neighbors, clear off the sidewalk before they even come outside, goes a long way. So, there you go. Thank you. <clears throat> I just have one or two. Um, I do like to thank the town staff for all the the street cleaning and stuff that we've been doing uh, for the snow and the ice removal. I know we have a couple back-to-back there. They've been doing a very good job um, with, with salting and keeping the streets clean. Um, also, I want to thank uh, the entire Emmitsburg community for uh, help for participating in the Valentine's uh, Day dance that we had for the Community Heritage Day. It was sold out, and we raised about $4,800 for the um, upcoming Community Day, and I appreciate everybody everybody's help because it took a lot of people to help put it on. So thank you for that. Uh, I'm finished. I'm done with that. I did skip the planning. Commission report from the planning commissioner. Can you please give up to us, please, Doc? Sure. This is the t- town planner's report for January 2019. Um, I'm also going to highlight the key aspects of my report. Um, so I researched and prepared the amendment tonight for the um, cross connection control program. As Kathy said, this is a mandate for from the um, Maryland Department of the Environment. I also processed the fee policy for that and the permit application. For community legacy, I processed a reimbursement request for the facade rehabilitation work for 317 West Main Street, 309 East Main Street, uh, 300 East Main Street, and 30 West Main Street. Processed nine applications totaling $59,917.75 out of an available $50,000 for the uh, fiscal year 2019 facade grant. I met with the Sustainable Community Board on uh, the 9th in order to review those applications. And then uh, we forwarded eight of those applications to the Maryland Historical Trust for review, and they're still in the review process. For MS4, Municipal Separate Storm Sewer Systems, applied for a $3,000 grant from the Chesapeake Bay Trust in order to start a storm drain marking program. Uh, We can use this credit towards our MS4 permit. Reviewed and processed bids for the Provincial Parkway Storm Drain Excavation Project. Created a request for proposals for the 2019 required MS4 projects. Started researching potential stream restoration uh, projects in order to meet our MS4 permit requirements. For permits and zoning, processed and approved uh, two change of use permits, one fence and two sign permits. Also an alteration of infrastructure permit and a street cut permit. Under Planning Commission, I prepared the Planning Commission's annual report for 2018. This is a requirement uh, per the Maryland law. Also, I presented this to the Planning Commission on the 28th and they approved that. Miscellaneous, I assisted the town clerk with uh, the pump station grant. I also did some maps for the proposed wayside exhibits. I attended a Frederick County <coughs> system training on the 23rd. I created a packet of local, state, and federal tax incentives, uh, loans, grants, etc., for those looking to start a new business in Emmitsburg. And I wrote an article for the town newsletter on home-based businesses. Thank you, Zach. Does anybody have any questions for Zach at this time? Commissioner O'Donnell? No, sir. Commissioner Ritz? Not at this time. Commissioner not. Blanchard? Nope. Glenn? I don't have any. Thank you. <clears throat> Mayor's comments? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, <coughs> uh, again, great job to our staff for uh, uh, what they did uh, around the clock and on the uh, streets. So these uh, little uh, nuisance snow we have every week, or it, it has to be uh, uh, dealt with. And... Uh, you know, it, sometimes you just don't see them coming. Uh, uh, I went to Mount St. Mary's Urgent Care Program for a minute over at the Vigilant Hose. Uh, they were so kind to cover up that presentation for uh, the Mount's uh, Urgent Care Center. Uh, I went met with the county executive. Uh, 
with all the other mayors. It's kind of a, a monthly meeting we're uh, re-engaging on and uh, go over a lot of things. One of the things was the SRO, SROC, is that what they reserved? Where they go to the schools, what do they call it? SROs. SROs, SROs. SROs. There, you, there you go, thank you. And, uh, that's where I first found we were getting the change here. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, the climate change. Uh, there's a state is really at seven with me and 70 other people from across the state met in Hagerstown. Uh, this has been put off since December because of George Bush's uh, passing away. We were supposed to have the first session there, but if there are three two day sessions and there are exams that go along with it. And uh, finally, we got one day in before the big snow that was supposed to hit, hit here. And, push back the other one so it's terrific it's a terrific course and uh, uh, we're going to have every, all the whole staff uh, and anybody up here that would like to go uh, it's it's phenomenal uh, what they're what they're talking about and even if you don't believe in it you ought to go out and listen to it and uh, and see what they do because it talks about mitigation and adaptation and uh, cutting back and uh, uh, getting rid of waste they one of the bigger bigger items we met with Michael Kay, the planner, the town manager, and I, and went over uh, formulate how we're going to put the move this thing from. Uh, uh, we are, we went out and stared at it. We marked the trees, and now we got to uh, get it to market. Uh, so we're working on that with him, and we have to get our attorney and all that, of course. Uh, Seat Shrine had a corporate partners program luncheon I attended last week, and uh, uh, this I ended up uh, last week uh, as a guest speak for. Reading across America at Mother Seton School, it was it's a phenomenal, phenomenal thing. And uh, uh, I want to thank uh, Commissioner Buckman for attending the Frederick County uh, MML uh, dinner uh, on short notice. Thank you very much for uh, co coverage. It's important that we you were there because it, uh, because we get become a banner city. I hope you all have a wonderful St. Patrick's Day and a safe one. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, good luck in Lent. Okay. <laughs> Any questions for the mayor? Commissioner O'Donnell? Uh, appreciate the uh, good luck wish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll need it. <laughs> Any other questions for the mayor? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Now we're going on to public comment. Before you come up to public comment, I ask you please to come up, give your name, your address. And please speak to the council directly. Do not speak to the staff. Um, keep all questions up forward, and we'll try to answer them if we can. Uh, the first one on the agenda is Ed Hines. Hey, Ed. Yes, sir. Is Hi, Duncan, good evening. Is Duncan coming up with you? Duncan? Um, sure. Yeah, we'll do we'll it together, and thank you so much. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Pleasure to be back in Emmitsburg, one of my favorite towns, and uh, a place that I love riding bikes through. Um, my name is Ed Hine. I'm 601 Magnolia Avenue in Frederick City. I'm also the Executive Director for Student Homelessness Initiative Partnership, or SHIP, of Frederick County. We are currently in care of over 700 children in our school system that are experiencing homelessness sometime during the course of the school year. Uh, each year we hold a large fundraising event uh, that starts and finishes at Mount St. Mary's University. Uh, it's called the Maryland Endurance Challenge. You'll find a little flyer there. It's a copy of a postcard that's actually in production right now. Uh, it's scheduled this year for May 18th. Um, and this is our third annual. I, I brought Duncan Glenday, who's our, uh, our event director for the event, uh, third year running, to tell you a li little more about the event. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, I'll keep it as brief as I can. Can you give your name, please? And the name is Duncan Glenday, 9672 Fleetwood Court, Frederick City. Um, <clears throat> there are three events in one. There's a 12-hour national championship. That's a national championship. So the person who wins this is officially the national champion, and that's out of Emmitsburg. There's also a six-hour event, and there's a three-hour event. And the concept is, for the 12-hour event, how many miles can you ride in 12 hours? And because of the fact that it's a national championship, we're bringing in world-class athletes, people who, who are literally are known worldwide. Um, the three hour is more of a fun ride, and we, we're trying to attract families and kids and things like that. Some of them will you know, race it and they'll put their, their hammer down and go as quickly as they possibly can. But the point is that we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to 
create an event that will have a lot of interest, that will bring interest into, into Emmitsburg, that will bring people from out of state. We've had people from Canada, from California, from Florida, Arizona, etc. I think we've so far we've attracted people from about 18 or 19 states plus Canada. Um, so the point is that there's a lot of interest in it. There are a lot of people coming into this event. And um, the question really is, and I'll, I'll leave it to Ed to, to extend the question, but the question is we're very interested in finding out how we can liaise uh, with yourselves to see how we can promote the event, what we can do to promote Emmitsburg as a city, because obviously it's out of Emmitsburg, and um, see how we can expand the event. We've had approximately 20% growth so far from the first to the second, and so far apparently to the third year because reservations are going well, and we expect it to continue to expand. So it will become a fairly big event in the future, okay. we hope. And obviously the primary objective is fundraising for SHIP. Thank you. Yeah, and even though we're just soon to, to start our uh, third annual event in, in mid-May, uh, we're already planning for our fourth annual event. Um, Tim and I had some conversations about how we might be able to kind of link the event and make it uh, more of a broader weekend over time, uh, maybe showcase the, the trails uh, up in the watershed and elsewhere. But um, one of the things that I'd love to have some conversation with, perhaps the city manager and perhaps others, um, is uh, taking advantage of a tourism grant called, it's a trip grant, uh, that's made available through the Frederick Visitor Center and, and Frederick Tourism. Um, and we're soon to apply for that grant and their grant cycle, which starts July 1 of this year and runs through June 30th. The dollars, would be, if we should win the grant, which I've done in the past with another cycling event, another fundraising event for SHIP, um, we should be in good shape to be able to secure some dollars, and it's pretty significant money, actually. Um, so what I'd love to be able to suggest is if we could begin to have a conversation about planning for uh, the fourth annual event in 2020, but also uh, working in a way that we could maybe secure some additional investment dollars from the tourism grant to help both uh, showcase Emmitsburg as well as promote further the, uh, the event itself. So um, I guess one thing I might ask is who might be that individual that we could begin to have conversations with within the city to talk about brainstorming and collaborative uh, discussion? Yeah, we'll go ahead. I, I would suggest a handful of folks for town staff, Mr. President, it's okay. Yeah. Um, our town manager, Ms. Willits, uh, I would recommend over your left shoulder, Mr. Wayne Slaughter from the EBPA, which is the Business Association. Wonderful. And I would be happy to join in and hopefully not get in the way. Um, <laughs> in the past two years, I've ridden over there at some point in the day and disrupted everything by saying, hi, I'm Tim from the town, and handed out flyers about what we have here. It's a little bit late, but uh, you'll see bikes on top of cars parked in front of the Yacht House and Stavros and so on. So there is a dividend there, and my understanding is some folks were staying at the Sleep Inn also. They were. So there's, there's a direct cash impact to our community for, for this activity. And, you know, you know we have young people in our, in our public school cluster who need the support. So really the pointy end of the stick is there, and this is, this is great. And I'm not going to speak for the Mount, but I bet they would like to get involved in this also. Mount St. Mary. They've been very supportive already, but, yes, absolutely, even more so. Absolutely. Uh, can I ask? Is, there, um, is this event on a Saturday? It is Saturday, May 18th. Um, is it all day long? The, the 12 hour. Okay. Um, the only thing, because um, I don't know if this year, um, I, I, I need to ask one question from the man behind you. Um, Mr. Davis, when is, when is the uh, fire company's big event? May 18th? Yeah, it's the same day. Uh, that's what it clashes on the, that's for next year. Um, Maybe if we don't have it on the same day, we can plan yeah. for it. The whole community gets so involved in this. It's good, a, good. There'll be a big to-do in the town for that same day. Very good. Um, I, it's exciting. I hope the, the, it would be nice if this was in the end of June when we have our community day. <laughs> right. Because we have right. a lot of bike rents. It would be nice to have it in June if, if we could ever have one in June. Terrific. But I'm glad this is working out, and I'm, I'm glad SHIP is getting – better organized and, and growing and, and helping more children through the Frederick County. Thank you, Cliff. Appreciate Thank that. You. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Administrative business? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Public comment? Well, I don't want to go down. Bryant Hoffman. 
This is on flags? Yes. Okay. Give your name and... I'm Brian Hoffman, and flag we had out by Stavros thing, and we could move it somewhere else because it went it, it went nobody's way or nothing. It was nobody tripping. We had been had plane for her from you guys. I don't know what was to plane for, but I just like it's like it asked us it asked us to do business and all that stuff for our flags that never opened. And pizza side, what you call it, thing we do is there. Always, oh, Stavros, let's go to Stavros Pizza, get some food. Mm-hmm. And that's, it was there for for for, for um, as Tyson, and I was there for, for it wasn't hurting enough, and I just <coughs> just don't know why. Mm-hmm. But we could move it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. It's part of the sign. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Do you, uh, I don't know if you want to, anybody else wants to speak on the sign on this now, everybody else is for the sign on this, um, wants to speak on that now or wait till it comes up on the agenda? Okay, go ahead and come on. Town staff, Donaldson, uh, owner of Temmonsburg Tattoo, co-owner. Uh, on the square, um, just quickly in reference to we uh, EBPA meeting, Mr. Slaughter, uh, Susie, and I attended this week, past week, uh, which uh, Zach attended and was very helpful in answering questions about the new ordinance, um, and has agreed to meet with the four districts that will be involved. Um, currently, we feel and Zach put those out today. I'm sure everyone was copied on those meetings. Um, suggestion I'd like to make is partic- particularly for the residential. Um, I think it's more important uh, uh, time-wise. I think it would be better served for residents in the evenings. Personally, um, just a thought. Um, works for me because I don't open till noon for the zoning district, business district. But I'm not sure how it works for everybody else. So, um, the other thing, again, very pleased with the, with so far the progress. But we still feel like the business community that I have spoken to and is pretty well represented with me today uh still feels like it's maybe an overreaching uh more than maybe overreaching feels like it's way a way big ordinance for a way small town uh ordinances zach went like, again to zach's credit he sat and answered the questions Susie and i had uh for for the time but anyway we think those meetings should take place before um and all the input as he was uh so gracious about receiving uh and and should be made the meet what i'm asking the commission is that maybe the meetings be made or be had with zach and the questions be answered for people in town because it is a very complicated ordinance to read and figure out um before this goes forward any further um presentations and 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 that alike i think it's really important and zach seemed to agree at the uh, meeting that we get everybody involved in the shaping of these ordinances because it affects all of us and the big changes that are coming to town with the rudders and such and and everything that's coming we need to be on top of all this as business owners and that's why the room is a lot fuller tonight because it's representing the businesses that are concerned about this and the complication so just wanted to put that out there thank you zach thank you everybody appreciate it thank you um i think that the uh the me- meetings that are presented here are mainly for for businesses during the daytime. I know I can't get to them during the daytime, but uh, hopefully there'll be meetings made for residents at nighttime. Yeah, I think that there should be another four sets or whatever for the people, like a 730, like the Well, the I think we can do meetings. the residents in the evening. I, yeah. I don't see a problem with that. I think but for most businesses probably during the day would probably be more beneficial, but I don't have a problem. And I'm sure Zach doesn't moving the the residential one um, to the evening. And these are, this is actually going to go out. If we have space in our water bills, it's going to go out to everybody. um, When your water bill goes out on March 30th. So look for it Mm -hmm. with all the dates and the information. And and I don't, yeah, one, um, one treasure, I'll wait. Absolutely. I, I don't think also that we're not planning on speeding through this in a, in a right. speedy fashion. I think we're going through it through a long, long process, <clears throat> through months of processing. And this all has to go to planning and zoning before it even comes to the council 
um, to be voted on. So planning and zoning will be taking a look at this way before the commissioners see it in the final version, if it does make it that far. So if anybody else has that, but the, does anybody else want to speak before we get to sign it? Yes, Diane Warbecker. Hello, Diane Walbrecker, 535 West Main Street. I was going to comment on the sign ordinance, but if we're going to have public meetings about it, I'd, I'd rather wait for that. So um, just a couple quick things. Uh, my husband and I almost killed ourselves coming down the steps right in front of the tattoo parlor. There's steps there now. And if you haven't been on the main street with all the nice, beautiful brick paving that we really like, those steps are really hard to see at night. And if you don't know they're there, we both were coming like this and both of us fell. Ooh. It was really embarrassing. The steps, I'm sorry? The steps are in front of the tattoo parlor. Between the planter boxes. Yeah, between the planter boxes. Oh, I didn't and even I know they didn't were there. I didn't even know they were there, and I'm not like an idiot, but it's, it's really hard I've to see it at know. night. Been there. Yes. Very hard to see. So I don't know if there's maybe um, reflective, tape really, or something. Really yeah, yeah. reflective tape or something that wouldn't take away from the beauty of it, but that would give a little bit of light there so that people could see it. Maybe the same yellow that's used for the on and off ramps of, of the sidewalk. That way well, they can see I'll, talk to, I'll talk to uh, Jimmy yeah, and see what we can do. There may even be a little do. reflective kind of nice soft lighting that you could do or something just to, Some solar to let light. people know about that. You know, Wait, anyway. Okay. Um, and there are a couple lights out on, on West Main Street, on the Main Street. Uh, okay. I don't know if, if there's a regular process. I'm sorry. I don't know if there's a regular process for doing that. I guess I could call the town office. The lights are out, you mean? Lights, okay. yeah. Yes. Two of the lights are out on Main Street, so I just wanted to point that out. And I was thinking that since the ship event is the same day as the um, spring fling, it's just it would be great if that could be a symbiotic kind of thing where they can benefit each other. But I don't know. I don't know when it is. I mean, I don't know what the plans are for those. So just thinking about it. Thank, Thank you, you Thank Diane. You. Anybody else before we get to the sign? Uh, Susie? Are, are you not, not yet. Sign ordinance now or you're waiting later in the agenda? We have either one. I'm asking if you want to speak now, if you want to stay for the sign, or just because it is down in the agenda further. You can speak now, public comment, or you can wait until the sign ordinance comes up. Okay. Susie, um, it's all right. it's okay. I always forget to move this. Stay or say, you're not talking into the mic. Susie Glass, 239 North Seaton Avenue. I just want to reiterate what Don was saying. Um, we did have a very productive meeting, I felt, um, with Zach. Um, but we as a com business community, and I know he's done an awesome job of putting his thing together for tonight, we just kind of feel like it's putting the cart before the horse. If we're going to have these meetings and the discussions, and we're going to make a lot of changes, if we make changes, then it's kind of... Um, Redundant. Yeah, it. You know, we it, we we're busy, busy people, and we have to come and watch something that's probably going to be changed somewhat. That um, we just thought we'd bring that to your attention. Thank you. These are just for discussion. Right. right. It's the way it should. I mean, I understand her concern. Obviously, um, there's no decisions being made, but procedurally, you know, for us. We have to let our commissioners know what's going on before we should let everybody else know so that they are at the forefront of it and they can answer your questions then if you have questions after that. So we're going to proceed with our presentation tonight um, just to give everybody a heads up it's for those of you that won't be here at the end of the meeting. The next presentation isn't going to occur till June because we are starting our budget process. So the last final presentation will be in June, but we are going to have those meetings that Zach set forth in April for all the individual districts, and we can have additional workshops in May and in June if necessary. This is all informational this evening? Correct. It's Nothing's being voted on. It's only informational to let you see what maybe the new ordinance will look like. And the reason that we broke it up into three meetings is because it is long and involved and, and it's easier to take in in smaller pieces. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. Is it safe, safe to jump in? 
Yes. Okay. Um, just for clarification regarding the just the sign process, I think there's a gray area on that for some folks. The process is working at this stage. It's the board right now that's hearing this information, so it's being brought to our attention. Nothing is set in stone. I think that's very clear. We've made that very clear, I hope. The next piece is we're not voting on anything to make it permanent. The next step in the process is this would go to the Planning Commission, and they would look at it and they would give it some review and mull it over, and then with their recommendations would come back to the board. So it's, it's a multi-step process. Uh, the purpose of the meetings that Mr. Uh, Golden is putting forward is to allow for further input for folks who typically wouldn't be able to do so here. And one thing I want to ask uh, the president, maybe staff, is um, if the meetings occur and if they occur here, I think there would be value to recording them yeah. and to rebroadcasting them in a similar fashion we handle these meetings because I think it gives more people more opportunity. The other part is, will we be able to record it so somebody can go online and just watch it you know, as a YouTube type item or, or a, a public access item? Do, do we have that option? It, it's gonna be done the same way our town meetings are. So right. somebody will be here to record it, it'll be uploaded to YouTube and then there'll be a link on our website just like the town meetings are in the planning commission meetings. And for the public piece again, and, and again, it's awesome you guys are here. It's an ongoing process. It's a long process, but please continue giving your feedback to us. You know, any anyone you want to, or all of us at one time, however you choose to do it. But it's your continuous feedback that helps us kind of winnie things down to the best product uh, in in our judgment and in your judgment. So I, I hope that helps. Commissioner. Yeah, I just kind of need a little bit of her hand up first. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of clarity because if we're going over a proposed, but then the townspeople are contributing to a different or a change, something that's going to be amendable to the community and to the vision of the town, and then you're going to propose it to us again? You're going to show it to us again? We have to. So what we are doing is we're giving you the signed ordinance with all the information so that you're informed. Then at the end of our presentation, then you as the board makes the determination, one, I don't want to make any changes it dies from here and nothing else happens or two you want to send it on to the planning commission you have to have an info all the information in front of you to decide whether or not you even want to send it to the planning commission and the procedurally we don't put out things that the board hasn't seen yet that's how staff can get ourselves in trouble mm -hmm. if we're out promoting something that the board's not even aware of, hasn't been educated on, and then we've got our tails between the legs because you're getting questions and you don't know what we're talking about or what you're talking about. So procedurally, this is the way we've always done ordinances. It's the way the code says that we have to do it. We bring it to you. You guys decide if you want to take it to the Planning Commission. All this stuff that we're doing for the businesses and for the public is to help speed the process along in the long run so that they can be a voice in this. And it makes your job easier if you know that they have all the information they can have, then it makes everybody's life easier. It's a long drawn out process. It's a difficult topic. Commissioner Ritz. I think the confusing, confusing part about this entire process is because it's a large ordinance and we are breaking it out over the course of right. several meetings um, so it becomes a little confusing I'm a little confused myself on another uh, another um, item part three was scheduled to be April 1st am I to understand that we're dropping that now we're gonna push yes. that back to June as you can see um, with the budget forthcoming yes. um, we have a lot of things we don't typically put anything else on the agenda except very minor things when we're talking about the budget. So your second meeting in April and your entire meeting in May is devoted to your budget. So staff has a lot of uh, administrative things that we've got to get done before the end of this fiscal year that I need to bring before the board. Understood. And if yeah. I throw the sign warrants on here, we'll be here till one o'clock in the morning. So we thought it was best to the mayor and I, we discussed it with, with Zach that, and Commissioner Sweeney that we push it back um, till June so it can have everybody's atten undivided attention. No, it's... That's, that's why. And, and it was a decision that was made today. Okay, good. I, li I like that. Um, one other question regarding the public comment, Mr. President. Yes. I know we have a lot. I see a lot of business owners out here. Yes. So they might be commenting on the, the proposed um, sign ordinance. When we discussed the ordinance this evening, I know it's um, basically the second, third, so to speak, 
Uh-huh. Are 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 the comments? Obviously, we'll have questions, but for public comment, are they for that particular section or for the the ordinance in in uh, general? We would like to do from the previous meeting and tonight's meeting. Um, any public comment? Any questions about that? Um, if we can kind of gear it towards those. Um, probably would be beneficial for the process. Okay. The reason I ask is because if, if they're um, thinking of coming up now at public comment to discuss or at the time of the agenda item, what would be best? Right. Well, that's why I ask them if they want to speak now. Okay. Or Usually some, some like to speak now don't like to stay for the meeting and some like to stay for the meeting and speak then. That, that's understandable. So, uh, Glenn, do you have anything you want to talk about? Um, you, are everybody else finished? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I say uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Just to reiterate, uh, after talking to members of the board up here, that uh, the sign ordinance is uh, a lot of things. Technology is changing. The different ways to present yourself inside, out, all these things, different lights in the museum in Las Vegas, is one concern we've had. Uh, the other concern is we have a special area. It's not a it's a registered area, not a historic district, but it's it's got some dignity to it. We want to preserve that. And uh, uh, the third thing is the yeah, sign is kind of an organic thing. It's kind of something that uh, it lives and breathes. We, have, we haven't touched this since 98. Now, I, I remember there was a candy store on the corner here. I talked to Ms. Glass about it. And, 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 uh, uh, I got into it with the town as I was the head of the EBPA at that time that said uh, they had suites on one of the shutter, uh, on one of the slats of the shutter, and, and the town uh, let them have it, and uh, they had to take it down. And uh, I, I wrote an article on that in the uh, dispatch. And uh, I really feel I'm a businessman. I've been here 23 years. We're working out of our house, but I've, I've had different sites here where I've been encumbered by sign ordinances and uh and and, and what the don ran into um just in the period of his time he's been here it's been two different kind of uh things going on and we i don't want that to ever happen again we want to get something down and what we did we went to the Merrill municipal league and they have all the towns and cities municipalities in, in, in our, our state and also across the country <clears throat> and they brought in the American Planners Association, which the town is also a member of. And then everybody is saying, look at your town ordinance. It only takes one or two sound, uh, signs downtown. We're, we're trying to protect it. That's all I want. And sometimes there's a lot of words there, but he, it's squeezing down into eight pages of definitions and this, and, and it's getting tighter and tighter. And the, the font they use, and it's not. Uh, uh, but the main thing is we got something to protect here and uh, uh, I live in it I live in that area so uh, and work in that area every day so uh, uh, it's for you all and that that's why I liked and supported when Zach and Kathy came to me and said let's let's redo this thing get it because it's really crazy and you were the the premier case you've gotten two different calls and uh in the couple of years you've been here, and we don't want that to happen anymore. Now, you can go down to New Market, and every sign has to be approved individually by them, so it might be a flip of the coin, and uh, we'll go this. I want people, business, to know what they can get and what they can do here, and there's nothing more like you can't put something on your shutters uh, to accommodate something down the historic. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Um, Ed Steinfeld. Hi, Eddie. Cheers. <laughs> Stanfield. Please give your name and your Ed Stanfield, 6591 Colebrook Lane, Middletown, Maryland. And uh, I live between Middletown and Jefferson. Uh, I'm a principal in the Emmitsburg Antique Mall, if you're wondering why I'm here. It's the um, sign thing has been bothering us for a long time. I think I approached it probably 30 years ago. We've got two billboards on 15, one south and one north, which direct people in Emmitsburg. Once they get here, they can't find them all mm -hmm. because we're one block off of Jeez. East Main and one block off of South Seton. And so the last time I spoke before planning commission, I think it was, 
a lot of people commented, yeah, we're getting people asking for directions all the time. So what our interests were, which is covered in here, is having off-site directional signs to get to the mall, which would be a tremendous help. The way the regs were before, we couldn't do it. So people would ask. Um, I, I had a couple of concerns. One is um, what the zoning was for the off-site signs that we could still permit off those two streets. And apparently that's not a concern. And the other concern was the size of the signs we have now. And uh, they wouldn't meet the new criteria, but apparently that's being grandfathered in. So that's gonna be a relief for us too. But that's what we're looking for is just some guidance for people that finally make it into town to find out where we are. Yes. Mr. Mayor? Ed, 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 don't we have a sign on South Seat? Like there's an antique yeah, the, sign. Yeah, uh, that thing appeared. Did that work? I think the county put it up. That's been here for at least, <laughs> no, it's a tourist council? Yeah, so, yes. Oh, is that who put it up? Yeah, I, I don't know. All of us, my manager says we got a sign up out there. And I said, "Holy cow, that's fantastic!" It's, it's been here for a little. It's been here for a little while. That that works. It's been lobbying for a long time. Does that work? Um, I think you understand it. Yeah, we we made two efforts. We went back a long time ago to to get some sort of provision, and the answer from the planning commission is someday we're going to revise the sign ordinance, and that was probably 25 years ago. <laughs> And uh, then the next effort uh, was when the town square planning in that group who did a fantastic job, we made sure we provided inputs for off, off premises signs coming in to the mall. Oh, Commissioner Buckman? I, I like all the great fun stuff you guys have been doing, bringing in some more uh, people into our town. I know that when I first moved here and I did GPS to find you guys, it didn't lead me to you. Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> GPS <laughs> led around it, but never to it. And I, there's got to be some way to correct that. Because I know that most people feel that our t antique mall is better than many of them, and they want to come. Um, but again, you're right, they can't find it. Yeah. Sometimes I drive people there. I see them looking, <laughs> driving in circles. Well, one thing we did in the past, we put a giant flagpole up. But every time a thunderstorm came along, it ripped our flag to pieces, and that thing was expensive to replace. A lot of wind in so it, it. Plus, they thought we were an institution of some sort. So. We do have a, um, a signage, uh, informational signage board on the square. Is the antique mall on that? That's actually getting replaced because it's outdated. It's, getting, it's outdated, mm -hmm. so we could put some information for our, our uh, informational signing board that's in front of the outhouse um, for the antique mall. Yeah, uh, where, wherever we can get permission from, from the landowner to allow us to put it up. So I haven't talked to anybody yet because up to now we haven't been able to do it. Uh, the, the final input I got, um, I think the work that, that Zach has done is as thick as it is, it's, it's fabulous. And to get something uniform, as the mayor said, be a tremendous help rather than trying to get our approval for, for everything. Uh, so appreciate the work and appreciate allowing the input, as, as the mayor said, an or organic thing. And uh, that's a big help. Thank you. Phyllis <laughs> Kelly? Kelly? Hi, I'm Phyllis Kelly. I live at 22 Centennial Fra uh, Fairfield, Pennsylvania. I am manager of the Emmitsburg Food Bank, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> I love Emmitsburg. Um, I just was, we've had problems down there this winter. The roof has leaked terrible. We've had mold problems in one area, and I just wanted to, people have told me to come to the council and let you know of what our situation is. And if anybody has an idea as to where the pregnancy center and us could move, the roof is in terrible condition. We did get it uh, temporarily so that the rain does not come in anymore. 
uh, but it's only a fix. It needs replaced, and to replace that big building is going to cost like $40,000. Um, and I don't know whether it's even worth it does, down there. Does but the food bank own the building? No. Michael no. Sullivan owns it. and the, rent it? We rent it. The, the pregnancy center rents it, and we sub rent from them. Uh, and it also, we're both using propane to heat it, and it just, like, a bill is $300 a month in the winter oh, wow. <laughs> for both of us. So, I mean, it's not, we can afford to rent somewhere else if we know where to rent. <laughs> well, um. We were looking maybe, and we had an idea where, um, I don't know, Boyle Store, Main Street Deli used to be. Um, we're There's just, an option there. And then we also have a new rental business thing maybe for uh, South Seton Avenue. 140 South Seton. 140 South Seton Avenue, which has parking already. Where's that? It's a brown house in between right the Paul's. Paul's Pit Stop across from the mayor. Where the old uh, garage was. Where they oh, okay. Where the Ford garage or something used to be? Uh, yeah. A half block up from Pizza Hut. Does there that is help? a rental sign the there house? now, I think. It's right? a single family house. What is it? It's a single family house. But it's being changed to business. Yeah. But there's also uh, a shed behind it as well. But like a, not a shed, like an informal shed, but literally like a parking shed. Do you know what they're talking about? He's on our board. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just letting the town know that we are, if you have any ideas. I didn't know we, we had thought where the deputy sheriff office is. Is that whole building being used? Or who owns it? Or is that yours? Or? all being used yeah mm -hmm. would the Seton Center have you approached the daughters regarding this is that not a they not have and um my concern there is it's way out of town right. we have many many walkers it's a block and a half off I know of, from where you are though I mean I, I understand what you're saying the, new, oh, Seton the new Seton Center the daughters oh no them. they don't have room for us they do not. when they okay, built okay. that we were to move in if they were on the other side where they used to be they were going to incorporate us but they had to size down, and they don't have room. Now, uh, how about corp, here? The corp where it used to be. Downstairs, all the build, all the rooms. That would be up to the county. Where, uh, where they right. kicked us out of this building. Yeah, that would be up to the county. <laughs> the, years that ago. Space. We were here to start with until they renovated it, and they said because, I understand because we're funneled under religious coalition, it's separation of church and state, I think. I'm not sure. I just know. 15 years ago, they kicked us out of here. <laughs> My recommendation would be to contact Zach, our town planner, um, and let him know exactly what you're kind of looking for, what your needs are, and let him work through some options that we may know of, may not know of, but we, you know, we're always keeping our eyes and ears out for grants and loans and things of that nature. So um, he's probably your best contact here at the town to be able to help you out with that. Okay, and the pregnancy center and us, we don't have to stay together. It's just nice to be together. You know, we're both equal. We can, we've discussed this and are willing to go separate ways, but we both need a place. I'll put it that way. Unless we decide to fix the place up that we have. I'm not sure what we're going to do, but I just wanted to make the town aware of what's going on. Have you approached the churches? Yeah, there's no, nothing in the churches uh, for permanent right. Mr. Golden, a quick question. Yes. Th that, that's in the historic, well, the, the grant designated area. Is that accurate? Yes, it is. Okay. You might want to tell the building owner that there are, there are, are grant funds available for him to, Replace to rehabilitate the property. There is a match. There, there will be an obligation on his part to put some money in, you know, a skin in the game, as it were. But there, there are funds available through a grant process, and the town has had profound success on Main Street with this sort of thing. So it would, you know, it might serve your needs very well, but you, know, you might suggest to him he contact town staff and pursue grant funding to help subsidize his effort to restore the structure. Okay. Uh, one of the problems is I live in Pennsylvania and, and the other, uh, Melanie Turner, lives in Pennsylvania too. And even now she, I think they moved to West Virginia. So, I mean, not living here, we don't know sure. <laughs> much about Maryland. <laughs> Yeah, Zach will help you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Free Thank you. Thank you. I have a few ideas, so I think we have we can. Yeah, we definitely don't start. want to lose the food bank and the absolutely. Yeah. 
Wayne. That's a garden. Or sign it. You're Wayne, you're going to wait for the, the garden to be presented? Yes, I believe we're okay. To okay. And, and Max, Max, too? Max Ling, or is it Ling? Let me see. M A X X. Uh, Mark. Oh, is it Mark? Long. Oh my God! You write worse than <laughs> Mark. You write worse than I do. Sorry about the handwriting. <laughs> it looks like Max Ling. <laughs> so, so good evening. My name is Mark Long. M mm -hmm. A R K. <laughs> I live at 800 Fraley Road. You sure you're not a doctor? I, uh, no, I'm not. Should have been. Should have been there. <laughs> but um, this isn't why I got up here to speak, but I want to reference uh, some points that uh, Commissioner O'Donnell mentioned. Um, I happen to serve on the executive committee of the Frederick County Affordable Housing Council, and we advocate for affordable housing in the county and also help create policy for affordable housing. Also serve on the board of directors of Interfaith Housing Alliance who create affordable housing and provide services for affordable housing. So. I would like to give you any information you would want. I'd be willing to give a presentation to the commissioners uh, if you want. Uh, I will be here when Malcolm Fergal makes his Alice presentation because uh, their highest priority at United Way is to create affordable housing in the county. And the, I mean, we kind of interlink uh, with our missions. But anyway, the reason I'm here, um, this afternoon, I was sat over at the community park uh, with my dog, Duncan, at the dog park and uh, enjoying the snow. And uh, my dog was enjoying himself romping in the snow. And um, we were about to leave when uh, Wayne Slaughter showed up uh, and his friend Sandra and uh, their dog, uh, Gina. And we, our dogs played for a while. And then uh, I said I wanted to get some exercise because uh, I like to stretch my legs from time to time. So we started walking through the community park and uh, which I do almost every other day. I really enjoy the park and enjoy the trail uh, very much so. Um, and I just moved to Emmitsburg three, a little over three years ago and um, th that was a great asset for me to be so close to the park and particularly the dog park. So we got to walking around and talking and um, Sandra starts talking about uh, the botanical garden that she was proposing or they will propose later in the agenda. Uh, and this was the first I had heard of it. Um, so I, I listened to what they were proposing and what they had in mind, and I thought, this is a wonderful idea. Uh, I would very much like to see this. Uh, you know, the, the park is beautiful. It's a great asset for the town. It's something we should be proud of, uh, but it could use a little color. And uh, I think helping uh, the pollinators is a great thing. Helping wildlife is a great thing. Um, and it would all go a great way, distance to helping, uh, you know, beautify the park a, even a little bit more than it already is and uh, would just make it that much more valuable for the town. So I'm all on board with this. I just wanted to come out and speak to this and say uh, I hope you uh, give it a favorable uh, uh, vote. Or I don't know if you're voting tonight, but I hope you will look at it favorably is what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks, Mark. Administrative business? Uh, introduction for Frederick County Council Michael Blue. He's not here. He's absent. Hmm. Nothing on the consent agenda. Treasury report. Commissioner Donald. Yes, sir. The Treasurer's report follows as such. Uh, as of uh, February 1st, 2019, the cash balance was $5,551,522. Uh, deposited were $283,812. There were withdrawals of $187,228, which leaves us with an operating balance forward of $5,648,106. Uh, these are the top 10 checks, and as staff is here, I would happily redirect any questions to staff. Before you ask Commissioner Ritz, field number two is down. The transformer failed. Um, we would not have any production in the month of December, January, and February. The solar field. Yes. I wasn't even going to ask this time. Uh, <laughs> Get out. I was going to ask for a report on the uh, how much we had saved, but uh, we didn't produce any 
Well, that field. <laughs> not on solar. Yeah, no, not on solar field too. <laughs> Is it, fix, is it going to be up and running now? It's supposed to be um, up and running by mid-March. Mid-March. So in the next couple of weeks. So mm -hmm. do, do we have to pay them for that, or what, what happens with that? No, they fix it. They're responsible for all the repairs and maintenance. Um, there's no cost to us because there's no production. So how do they do with the cost of the solar? I mean, how do they charge? They don't charge us for field two. Okay. But there's no production. There's no invoice or anything okay. to be paid. All right. Thank you. That concludes the treasurer's report. Well, thank you, mm. Mr. O'Donnell. Planning Commission report, there is none. Now we're going to the agenda items. Adoption of an amendment of, to create a cross-connection control program for discussion and consideration. As I mentioned uh, previously under the manager's report, this is a state mandate as a result of the Maryland Department of Environment's inspection that they did at the water, at the uh, water treatment plant, I believe in January. Uh, I have Mr. Fissel here, as you know, is the superintendent of water and sewer, and uh, Zach, who will uh, go over this agenda item and answer any questions you might have. So I'll turn it over to both of you. Okay, so we're gonna start by going through um, briefly of the proposed ordinance so the uh, members of the public under, kind of understand what this is all about. So um, under purpose, basically the purpose is to protect the uh, public potable water supply served by the town from possible contaminations, um, which could backflow or back siphon into the public water system. Under the authority, um, the authority was, like Kathy said, was brought down um, from ND MDE, but it was originally started from the Federal Safe Drinking Water Act of 1974. Uh, responsibility, ultimately, we are responsible um, for the protection of our water distribution system from contaminants or pollution due to backflow or uh, back siphoning of contaminants. Um, for definitions, uh, I won't go through any of that unless someone has a question on one of the definitions. It's multiple pages. For administration, the Water Department will operate the cross-connection control program to include keeping of records, um, which fulfills the requirements of the MDE cross-connection uh, regulations, and the Planning Department will help administer. Where are you? I'm sorry. We're on page 20. We skip the definitions. Yeah. Why is this all in bold cap capital letters? It's very hard to read. So anytime... Correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Willits. Any time that we are pr proposing a change to the code, anything that's bolded and capitalized is new text being entered into our code. But there's no old text. To it's all new. It's all new ordinance. <laughs> Just as the sign code, it's all new. So that's why it was bolded. It is hard to read. Okay. Something that could be corrected in the code at a future date, but there's got to be a way to delineate. As you know, most of your ordinance come through with new and old. Oh. And so that way you can see what's new and what's old. And just unfortunately, when it's brand new, it's all like this. Or a different font. Yes. Like Tahoma. It's I second blander. that. Anyway, go ahead, Zach. Okay. Um, the owner shall allow their property to be inspected for possible con cross connections and shall follow the provisions of the town's program and MDE's regulations. Um, the owner shall be responsible for water quality beyond the outlet end of the contaminant device and should ult utilize. Um, fixture outlet protection for that purpose. Um, town staff will assist them in the survey of his or her facilities and assist them in the selection of proper fixture outlet devices and the proper installation of these um, devices. So for requirements, the town will provide on-site evaluation or inspection of the plans in order to determine the type of backflow preventer, if any, that will be required. Um, the town will perform, uh, will also inform them of any um, corrections that need to, or they're deemed necessary. The town will not allow any cross connections to remain unless it is protected. The town shall inform the owner by letter of any failure to comply. By the time of the first re-inspection, the town will allow an additional 15 days for the correction. In the event the owner fails to comply with the necessary corrections by the time of the second reinspection, the town will inform the owner by letter that the water service to the owner's premises will be terminated within a, perm a period not to exceed five days. 
the let's see the town may charge a fee if the owner's water service is disconnected in the event that the owner informs the town of extenuating circumstances um, as to why the correction has not been made the time extension may be granted for up to 30 days if the town determines at any time that a serious threat to the public health exists the water service will be terminated immediately so for the owner's responsibilities the owner shall be responsible um, for the elimination and protection of all contaminants on their property. The owner, after having been informed by letter from the town, shall, at their expense, install, maintain, and test, or have tested any backflow preventers on their premises. On new connections, um, the owner shall submit a town cross-connection permit application with associated fee and an approved backflow uh, device test report from a certified black, uh, backflow device tester. Um, one of the easiest is to use is the county. They do test these, and it's pretty reasonable. The owner shall submit to the town every two years a um, permit application with associated fee and an approved backflow device test port report. The owner shall correct any mal uh, malfunctions of the backflow preventer, and the owner shall inform the town of any proposed or modified cross connections. Um, in this ordinance, you'll see in figure 33 and 37, the owner shall install the backflow preventers in a manner approved by the town, which is basically, um, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm really confused. How much, are these people's homes and there's a problem with them? We're, can you can you break sure. this down a little bit more? I don't understand, yep. so I'm not processing anything you're saying. Yep, I'm almost there. Can I just go a little bit more? I guess. Okay. Degree of hazard. All threats will be classified by a degree of hazard and will require the installation of approved reduced pressure principle black flow preventive devices or double check valves. So for permits, um, they're required for each backflow preventer. A fee will be charged for the initial permit and a separate fee for the renewal of each permit. And like I said, permits will renew every two years and are non-transferable. Um, existing in-use backflow prevention devices any existing backflow preventer, preventers shall be allowed by the town to continue in service unless the degree of hazard is such as to supersede the effectiveness of, of the present backflow preventer or result in an unreasonable risk to the public health. <coughs> and basically the next is periodic testing. What I said, it's every two years. Records and reports, um, we are required by MDE to keep record of every single um, prevention device if MDE would come back and ask for a report and we don't have it we would be the ones getting in trouble and now to your question for residential dual checks so all new residential buildings will be required to install a residential dual check device immediately downstream of the water meter at the owner's expense um, uh, Mr. Fissel and staff discussed if there's any major work determined by the water department to be done on a home he will require um, a new device be added. <coughs> Do we know how much these devices cost or approximately how much they cost? Just Yes, they're approximately $60. $60, okay. Um, so we're talking commercial and residential, new construction. When a change occurs to a commercial or residential property, it will be retrofitted. When you say downstream, does that mean in the house past the water meter? Okay. I'm going to ask um, Mr. Fissel to come up sure. and okay. answer all these questions um, about the actual installation and questions about the, the backflow preventers themselves. He's more familiar with them. Sure. Sounds reasonable. Get up there. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. <clears throat> so I'm just trying to verify I, I understand the, the big picture. Um, so downstream means within the homeowner's property, like w w within their structure. Immediately after the meter. After the meter, there it is. Okay. Um, does the valve purge right there? Like if there's a backflow event? Mostly in the homes, you're going to put in a little, mm -hmm. this is about like that, it's a dual check. Okay. okay. It will not dump. It, it won't do anything except prevent it from going Okay, back. so the water in the building is static. Unidirectional valve. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the permitting process is required by the state? Is that like there has to be an inspection and a, a permit every two years? Staff? <laughs> yes, they are required by MDE to 
for get a permit too? residential not for residential no okay, okay. just for business just for businesses and, and for commercial purposes is it town staff who inspects it or do they hire that outside approved contractor they would hire an outside approved contractor um dan and the water department would be available for any would questions be, do you feel it's in our best interest to do it or to have a vendor do that it? would be a certified plumber okay. that's certified in backflow right. testing they have to test it periodically and ensure that it's working properly now most of the commercial ones like you say would dump okay, okay. if they would lose pressure uh say in the main mm -hmm. outside the building this would open up and not allow any back siphoning. any backflow any siphoning back into the system it'll it'll basically provide a gap in the system so the water cannot go back into the system and do we have a an estimate as to what a plumber's fee might be for that visit to certify the the backflow item the valve sorry is that like an hour's work right, right now the town has 10 of them and and they're like a hundred dollars a piece yearly are you, okay. you're, you're not you're are the old residents grandfathered in they are pretty much grandfathered in unless there's significant work that needs to be done on their um, interior some have meters and some have curb stops so there's a difference Okay, this Every water service has a water meter. Well, my house has a curb stall, but it has a meter on the house, so a little black box on the house, um, which tells you how much water goes through it. But my actual water connection is a curb stop, which you know turns the water on and off. Yes, but we're you're talking about right after the meter. So your meter is inside your your basement. Right, right, way inside the basement. Uh -huh. <laughs> So if you would ever do major plumbing work, we'd require you to put a backflow preventer in. A lot of the houses now, they have the, the swing check valves. Mm -hmm. uh, that will help with some degree, but they're not, uh, they get old, they leak past. Right, they do, they, and they do stick sometimes. Yes. Or stick open or stick shut. Correct, <laughs> yes. It'll stick shut and you won't have any water pressure. No. So yes, Commissioner Dahl. Oh. She was Commissioner Buck. So all businesses are required to do this, but residents are not required unless they do some major construction or they're new. Correct. Correct. Okay, so if we pass this, do they have 15 days, the businesses, to get this done? It's not all businesses either. Dan can explain if, that. If, if you have a, a cross-contamination consideration probability uh like let's just take for instance the car wash the way they fill their uh, soap containers and everything for the sprays they have an air gap okay that's nothing more than a piece of pipe that's higher than the tank that it can never get back up in that pipe that's that's an authorized backflow preventer that's, like a vent. that's a physical backflow prevention that doesn't have to be inspected but one time mm -hmm. and as long as you don't raise the, the tank level up into the pipe, you're good. You know, it doesn't have to be inspected unless you change the plumbing. Right. Now, say the large boilers and stuff that could pressurize and backfeed into the system, yes, they need to be inspected yearly. Uh, that's not only the state, that's county, and now we need to approve our uh, ordinance also to to get up to get keep up with everybody else basically it's our job to keep record of everything um right. so if there's a, any ever um, questions we have record so you'll of. contact the businesses that are required to do this and they'll have a reasonable amount of time not 15 days they'll have 90 days in the beginning um to have their devices checked and their permits filled out that's for the new businesses right that's, that's for true. existing also we have a list of it's about two pages, but the majority of it, which I did speak with Daughters of Charity, and they said I could speak about this. They are in favor of this, actually. They said it's a highly dangerous situation for some of their equipment, so they are 100% in support of this. But they are the majority of the, the case, and they are aware of the permit requirements, and they think it's great. Mr. Sweeney? Um, yeah. Is it okay to ask Mr. Sure, Donald. Um, Mr. Golden, the question, and... When I previewed this, I didn't see it, so I may have missed this, but bear with me. Um, I'm aware that Baltimore County, when a, a private home changes hands through sale, 
there's an inspection of the chimney. And if the flu doesn't pass inspection, the private residence is required to reline the chimney flu. Now, is, is there something in here that when a property transfers from one owner to another, a residence, that it's required to add the, the backflow device, backflow preventer valve? No, sir. Is that something we might want to consider? Would there be value to that so we get ourselves up to speed sooner? I don't see how they would. Um, MDE does not require that, but I would defer to Dan. I, that's not a bad idea, for sure. Uh, I'm just worried about the the expense it might, inc you know, the individual might incur the the seller or the buyer, however, however that might be negotiated. But if it's something that protects the system and protects the broader community, I think there's a, a higher purpose that might be served by that. And you know, I'd ask the board maybe to consider that. Can I? Commissioner Ritz. Thank you. Um, we were talking about grandfathering. I was a little confused on that. So residential uh, properties aren't are grandfathered in unless there are. What was the rest of your? So unless there's significant um, water work that needs Dan's attention, like a, a infrastructure permit. Okay. If it's major, um, Dan will go to the house and or his staff and determine whether or not it's required. And you're only going to know that if the homeowner is actually doing something. Correct. Okay. I mean, we're not going to pull each individual house. No. And go in and do an inspection on their basement. Uh, but if you would have a water meter upgrade, uh, possibly have the plumbing. Say a lot of people don't have valves inside their house. So if, if say, in the middle of the winter, their line would freeze in the basement or something, or a line would break, they would the water would keep pouring into their basement until we get there to shut the valve off, oh. the curb stop. Now, a lot of times when we have plumber that we know a plumber is in there, we'll have them put valves on each side of the meter so the homeowner can go down there and boom, water shut off. <laughs> That's a prime time to put a backflow preventer in. I'm talking minor work like that. Sure, I mean, it sure. would take a plumber 10 minutes to put one of those in. Yeah, he, he's correct, because I, I I believe I have one. I might have one on my house already, because mm -hmm. when they did the mains for plumbing out there already, my pipes did freeze and bust in January. Mm -hmm. I lost my whole dining room this year, mm -hmm. and it's a good thing they put a turn-off valve inside. I didn't have to. This happened in the Saturday evening. You guys, when they got, I would have lost more than just my 